Good afternoon, Professor Peter Dixon. Uh, it is a pleasure to be here. I and Devendra Pratap, my colleague from NCAER, are visiting COPS for two and a half weeks to work on and learn from Professor Dixon the art of Orani model so that we can take it back to India and implement India model. Uh, uh, firstly, thanks very much for hosting us here. You have been very kind. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure to have both of you here and working on a very important issue. Yeah. Thank you very much. And thanks to Maureen, who has also been a great help, and me, who has been working with us all the time that we were here. Uh, my sincere thanks also go to Professor Sisira Jayasurya of Monash University, who made my contact with you, Peter. And uh, we have a long-term relationship with uh, C.C. Rajai Surya and Scott Davenport from NSW working on the issues of agriculture, particularly marketing and issues of competition and regulation. Uh, this has now come to a stage where we would like to have a general equilibrium model of the economy where we would have the issues of agriculture, not only agriculture, maybe manufacturing also addressed. That's how we are here, and uh, uh, please enlighten us with uh, whatever uh, little we have done with you here, and what you would expect from us while you go back. Okay, so we, we, while you've been here, we've constructed a, a computable general equilibrium model. That's a, a picture of the whole economy, divided into 57 sectors, and we've concentrated on the effects of changing um, agricultural subsidies and we've looked at the um, effects of um, abatement curves, that is um, what would happen to the Indian economy if um, CO2 emissions uh, were abated by from agriculture and from, and manu and from manufacturing. Right. Okay, and what, what potential is there for putting targets on, on, on uh, reductions in emissions from manufacturing and targets for possibly for agriculture and what, what possibilities are there for trading between, between the two sectors. And uh, in future research we hope to do this whole exercise at a much more detailed level with abatement curves not just for manufacturing and, and agriculture but for um, each of the individual sectors with um, for, uh, concrete and for, um, for steel and for all, all the manufacturing sectors and, um, and for the different types of agriculture. Thank you very much Peter for giving this uh, broader picture and uh, as we had discussed we would have a project workshop or a discussion group in New Delhi in March. Uh, my Director General Dr. Shekhar Shah has, had, has invited you uh, and is very happy to host you and Maureen for a week or even more at NCAER prior to the conference and uh, Dr. Shekhar Shah also sends his regards to you and Maureen. Well, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to meeting him and uh, I'm very much looking forward to visiting India again. The last time I went to India was in 1965, so it's been quite a long time <laughs> between visits. <laughs> Um, and I, I had a tremendously yeah, interesting and productive time in 65 when I visited. I was uh, an undergraduate student at the time and uh, this time I'm very much looking forward to um, working on this uh, really very important modelling project with, you, with your team in, in Delhi. We, we, we work in Delhi, right? Right, yeah, we yeah. work in Delhi. And, yeah. uh, so thank you very much for accepting our invitation. Uh, there's something interesting that Peter I had discussed with you that very recently uh, Dr. Shekhar Shah who is uh, for Shekhar and I had organized a workshop for two days on India in the Asian century. You see after you had visited in 1965 uh, till 1991 we were we had kept the economy closed and yes. we were quite a target and tariff rates were high and domestic regulations in place on industry particularly, Ni 1991 onwards we have had a major economic uh, policy reform where tariff reduction has already been 
uh, undertaken and tariffs are quite low at least on manufacturing goods. However, there is a lot to be done on the issues of what kind of firms, what kind uh, India needs, the workers India needs, the issue of balance between agriculture and industry, the issue that agriculture adds value only 14% but sustains 50% plus labor force in India and also the issue of uh, firms remaining small and economies of scale not being uh, accrued to them are some, some of the major issues that we look forward to understanding in the coming three years. So it's a longer term horizon that we have in mind. Uh, can you please enlighten us on how the CGE models, computable general yeah. equilibrium models, can help us yeah. understand these issues better? Right. Well, CGE models um, are models of the whole economy and try to, to um, trace out all the links between different parts of the economy. So, for instance, when I was there in 1965, there were all sorts of, of regulations. The economy, as you said, was very closed. So, um, well, for instance, there were exchange rate regulations in those days. So the official exchange rate, I remember, was um, four rupees to an Australian dollar. Yes. But the unofficial exchange rate in the street was 20 rupees to the Australian dollar. Right. Right. So this, and this led to all sorts of, of bad behaviour and distortions and so on. And the CGE model is, is quite good at tracing out the effects of removing regulations, the, tracing out who wins from the removal of regulations and, and who loses. So, in, um, uh, as you mentioned, uh, the, the reductions in tariffs. CG model is very good at working out the effects of reductions in tariffs, how the import competing industry has, has an adjustment cost, but that's offset by the fact that export oriented industries do much better if you've got low tariffs. Um, and the transition of the Indian economy from having a large percentage of the workers in, in agriculture to um, having higher productivity agriculture and therefore having less people than required in agriculture and how that how that will play out with the transition to um, urban occupations. Um, CGE models are a very good um, instrument for looking at that sort of issue where there are connections between the various sectors where people are flowing from one sector to another sector where there are adjustment costs trying to quantify um, how to handle the, the transition from being basically a rural economy, which uh, India was at the time of um, independence, mm -hmm. to now being um, an industrial power, and we're hoping in the next century to becoming um, a rich industrial power rather than a rather poor industrial power, which is currently, currently is. Yeah, thanks for enlightening on this issue. And I think what you have rightly said is that while the tariff reforms at the border are, you know, important, the issues of uh, behind the border that we yeah. are discussing, you know, issues of agriculture, manufacturing and services are quite interrelated and a general equilibrium model uh, should be a good tool to understand uh, the way forward for us. Yeah, and what, what, what will be the effects of... of actually the, go in the opposite direction, environmental regulations in the future. Can India reduce its emissions of all sorts of pollutants? Uh, will, this, will this be incompatible with f future economic development or, 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 or will actually future economic development and, um, and, and improved environmental outcomes be complementary ra rather than in uh, tension? And that's a good CGE topic. Right, the relationship between improving the environment and economic growth and development. Right, and we do look forward to a continued association with you in the coming months till we welcome you to New Delhi in March. And yeah, yeah well, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing Delhi. When I was last in Delhi, there were about half as many people in India as there are today. So there's another CGE issue, the effects of population growth. You know, I think when I was last in India, the population was about 450 million. Yes, close to that. And today I, I understand the population is over a billion. Yes, it is. Right, so um, 
one of the big transitions for India in this coming in this century will be um, from being a high population growth country to being a much lower population growth country. Right. And so how ageing that will raise the whole issue of, of uh, population ageing, yes. which has been tackled in various parts of the world and will come to India very soon. Yes, and we would at least have the benefit of having the young population and demographic dividend of the, you know, which we might uh, reap in the most productive way. And uh, it's important for us to understand how the behind the border issues and other issues using the general equilibrium models. And uh, let me also add that it is our pleasure and we are extremely pleased that we are sitting with someone uh, who is the master of general equilibrium and uh, CGE modeling. It is our pleasure that we are here and uh, dream come true. Okay, well, thank you very much, Jesha. It, it was great having you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Okay.